Today on Locked on Rockies, we take a break from the reviewing the Rockies series because the World Series is set and there's a lot of interesting connections to the Colorado Rockies that we have to discuss. Plus, get your bad World Series takes out of here. You are Locked on Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 25th day of October in the year 2023. I am your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if you're an everyday or out there checking us out, we thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in and finding us on your favorite streaming service. Thank you for finding us on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show by commenting your thoughts on the Colorado Rockies, letting me know what's on your mind when it comes to the ball club and lots, lots more. You can be just like D.A. Brian is the reason I think it's the wrong move to extend Blackman. Let's see. Without Blackman, the door would be open to play Brian and Montero. Trading time at first and DH, but with Chuck, there's a log jam. Certainly going to be a conversation we have throughout the offseason because it's a good point. The DH position's convoluted. You're someone can't out of those three players, someone isn't gonna play. And when you're looking at those two, you have two veterans that uh believe they've earned their way or you know, have earned their way into the lineup through their status and a young guy that really needs to continue uh, to get uh, the uh, the at-bats and time. So uh, there you go. We'll, we uh, read comments. We'll read lots more comments, and we will be diving more into uh, DA's comments as well. well on our next uh, YouTube comment it's a segment that we do, we're not doing it today because I'm, I'm a little fired up on some stuff and, and, and just – I think there's some interesting points that we need to make when it comes to the Rockies and uh, the connections to two teams that are in the World Series that recently lost 100 games. Can the Rockies be the same type of team? I'm really hesitant to, to buy into that. And I will uh, I will uh, break into that, dive into that, dive into it. That's what I wanted to say here on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. And I also think people's takes on the World Series and its watchability and Mad Dog and all this stuff is, again, another example of ridiculousness and uh, unnecessary bias that continues to seep into the world of sports. We're going to talk about that as well. Uh, before we dive into everything today, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. Uh, I wanted to start with the uh, interesting thing. I mean, wow. Rangers D-backs. <laughs> no one expected this to be the World Series. Certainly not what I expected, where I expected the Diamondbacks to be. And certainly uh, a more example of the importance of navigating the full season. The Diamondbacks had two ultimate peaks and valleys moments throughout their, their regular season, including moments where they almost weren't going to make the World Series or the postseason at all. And now going through and steamrolling the Dodgers and going blow to blow at the Phillies and beating the Brewers, that, I mean, it, it's, it shows that this team was capable is capable of taking down those teams and it shows that the team is good even though you look at the things and you look at the record you look at the run differentials you look at the fact that this team really didn't blow anybody away in terms of standings overall within baseball kind of a mid to lower uh lower half of the league in most statistical categories but this was a team remember at one point in the beginning of this year this was a team that was dominating this was a team that was taking care of business, especially in the division, and was setting a pace and is setting a, 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 it was off to a tremendous start in the tremendous first half. 
And then, of course, things in the second half, and, and, and there was a lot of implosion and, and, and a lot of losing and a lot of worry. But then you read the stories and you hear from the guys and, and you see what the, the Diamondbacks were able to do. That's why they deserve to be there. And why I think this conversation of, oh, well, it's the Diamondbacks. What are they doing? What are they? Oh, blah, blah. You're, and, and, and saying the regular season doesn't matter, you're missing the context of an entire season. And to only see teams that dominate the regular season, fans of teams and pundits of teams and things on there of, of, of these teams that dominate the regular season and haven't translated that to the regular season, it just seems wishy-washy. And it just seems like you want to be selective. You, you want to ignore the fact that the Diamondbacks in the first half of the season and points this year were one of the better teams in baseball. And the fact that this is a Diamondbacks team led by a bunch of young, exciting guys doing different things. They're there with the younger runner differential, but their backs were against the wall in that series. So what do they do? Start stealing more bases. Start doing more creative things. That's the type of stuff you have to appreciate. And when you completely negate the Diamondbacks because they're an Arizona team and they're not Philly, they're not New York, they're not Boston, they're not California, it's so unbelievably annoying and so, so frustrating for fans of these teams because it matters. It means a lot to us. I don't care about your TV ratings. I really don't. I do not care about any sort of, especially in the postseason for baseball. Basketball's here. Hockey's back. Football's here. College football. There's so many things that factor your postseason viewing things other than the fact that I really could care less if the East Coast isn't all that interested in this World Series. I don't care. Your teams fell flat. You're not immune, and you're not the center of the sports world all the time. I could care. I'm more excited to watch Rangers Diamondbacks than Astros Phillies again. Or any New York team or Boston or really any team. I mean, those two teams from the AL East, especially the Mets. And, and really, I'm sick of the Phillies. <laughs> I am. I'm sick of the big name teams. I'm sick of the big name teams and fans thinking they're entitled to all of the all of the respect, all of the view. You have to watch us. We're the Yankees. We're the Red Sox. We're the Dodgers. You have to watch us. You have to care about us. We're the big teams. We're the big money teams. We're the big market teams. I don't care about any of you. In fact, this postseason, I've enjoyed watching teams that fly under the radar much more than I've watched or cared about any of the conversation around the big name teams. Because all in all, all I've heard is a lot of collective whining from the dominant regular season teams. I don't think that you can sit there and just say, well, the regular season doesn't matter. It does matter. You have to, you have to earn your spot even in the extended playoffs. And then when just because you make the postseason and just because you're good in the regular season, that doesn't mean you deserve it, the World Series. That doesn't mean you deserve to have everything in the playoffs handed to you on a silver platter. You are division winners. Home field advantage, rest, the whole nine. And these big teams, these big market teams, these big budget teams, these big farm system teams, these big name teams fall flat. And then we're supposed to sit here and not, well, the, the game is ruined. You can't enjoy the world's. This World Series is going to be a bust because it's not, because it's Diamondbacks Rangers. You're not watching the games. You're not watching the cool teams. You're upset jealous nature because your team didn't make the play of the world series is seeping through. So you blame the format, you blame the rest, you blame this, you blame that, you blame that. How about just accept the fact that baseball is so tough. It is such a hard game. It is so hard to be consistent that just because you make the playoffs and just because the regular season doesn't go, it goes well for you. Doesn't mean it's a slam dunk and doesn't mean you're the best team. I'm sorry, it doesn't. This is the time to prove you're the best. Right here, right now, in October. Because guess what? You get to beat up against crappy division teams. That inflates the record. How many wins did the Dodgers get plus on? Because they, had, they got to play the Rockies so much. And that goes deeper into the past. Goes for the Diamondbacks as well. I'm not impressed when you dominate the regular season, when you fall flat on your face, 
in the postseason. Good teams handle the adversity. Good teams bounce back. And the great teams, the championship teams, handle all of that adversity and more to get to the ultimate goal of the championship. The Diamondbacks and the Rangers had fought tooth and nail to get to where they're at now. And they deserve to be respected as, as, as uh, and, and viewed and celebrated. Because through all, uh, all of the weirdness and craziness and, and, and nutsness of baseball happened, and those two teams are the ones left standing. That's what makes baseball the, play, the baseball playoffs so cool. That's what makes these series so fascinating. That's why I like playoff expansion. You gave the Diamondbacks a shot, and they've taken full advantage of it. That's awesome. And it's also the way the Rockies are going to get back into the playoffs. Can the Rockies do what the Rangers and Diamondbacks did and quickly turn things around and make it to the World Series and make a bunch of noise? I don't quite think so. But we'll get a good idea in 2024. Let's talk about that coming up here in segment number two. But before we do that, got to tell you about some of the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Jace Medical. Jace Medical offers modern medical care and treatment, and that's important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment you need. Jace Medical is your solution. Just fill out their online form, and one of Jace Medical's board-certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate, then Jace will send your prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies where your order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. You can also send your physician a message for answers to treatment-related questions at any time. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case, which you can customize at Jace Medical. Save more than $360 by getting antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using the code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E-M-E-D-I-C-A-L.com, jacemedical.com. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Networks. And you can find us on your YouTube channel, the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. If you want to see my ugly mug talk Rockies baseball, it's all there and available for you. So just, just kind of put a bow on my first segment. I, I just think baseball is so much more streaky than lucky. Luck plays a huge role. Baseball is a lucky sport. The fact that you can even do what you do as a, as a, as a hitter in baseball, the fact that you can even hit the ball in, in some ways it's lucky enough. And the fact that you guessed and swung, but I just don't think that it's, you can ignore the big picture, especially with the two teams that made it to the world series. Both of them made, made trades. Both of them are fighting for the division at different points in the season. Both of these teams showed that they had potential and answered the call when they needed to, especially Arizona backs up against the wall and Texas going back and forth with one of the best teams in the league and in the business. I mean, it really, the, the regular season matters because it, it, it's how a team gels and it's how a team handles adversity. And that translate and correlates directly into the postseason and postseason performance. You have to be confident in your teammates and your abilities. And that's what you do through the regular season. So just be upset that your team lost, but don't be looking for every little excuse or things to pull from when on paper, these two teams shouldn't have made it, but they beat out the teams that were the, that were supposed to be the quote unquote better ones, but they didn't come up in the big situations. And that should be what you're talking about more. That's what you should be upset about because the regular season matters. Cause if you're a Rockies fan, it's all you get more often than not. And the lack of performance in the regular season means we don't get to watch postseason baseball with the Rockies in it that much. The regular season obviously matters. It might be a little diluted or blah, 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 or whatever. But I just think it's just, I don't know. I, I just think it's just some biases and just 
shortcoming and 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 downplaying teams that deserve to be there. They're the ones left standing. <laughs> That's that, that anyway. So can the Rockies do what the Diamondbacks and Rangers did? Can the Rockies quickly turn things around from 100 lost seasons and get themselves into a position? The Diamondbacks were the last wild card. So, so basically, that's that's the lowest thing. I don't think the Rockies – I don't think we can sit here and be abundant as confident. I really don't. I, I think these teams have had stronger farm systems. I think these teams have actually understood the rebuild process and embraced the rebuild process and done stuff that that builds up towards these and this moment for them. And I think the issues with the pitching are just going to be too, too much. If if this team can go out and, and I think you got to remember with 2024, like because if, if they're going to follow this model, 2024 is a year where the Rockies show promise. They're fighting a little closer to 500. They make some smart moves. They're building up. And then, but the real step forward for both of these teams was a couple of years after and a couple more years to build and a couple more years to build on the foundation. I mean, the Diamondbacks also, though, were, went super young and, and, and real, but that's the thing. The Rockies don't have the farm system, the off the front office and the pitching abilities of these other teams. Of these two teams, they don't operate the same way. I don't think that the Rockies are going to spend money like Texas anytime soon, which would be the quickest way to address your your starting pitching problem. I mean, it, it truly is. Money talks, man. It would be really, and especially if the Rockies really want to set something up, you're going to have to go out and spend money to build up this rotation. Because guess what? You ain't going to have the moment. You're not going to be able to bounce back if your rotation looks the exact same way as the, as the way the year ended. That's the interesting wrinkles here when you get with the Rockies. Bringing in pitching is really hard. Free agent pitching. I mean, Texas goes out and what do they do? They rebuild their rotation by, by going out and get a bunch of names, spending, spending money and, and bringing people in. Arizona develops. Arizona was a negative run differential team and, and, and pitching wasn't necessarily a strength for them this year, but they have a couple of arms that are dominant. The Rockies have exciting position and core players that I think are primed for a solid step forward. And can the Rockies find themselves in 2025 in a position to get back in there? Herman Marquez should be healthy. You have Antonio Sensatella, I believe. Those two will still be bigger question marks. You have two another season added on to Freeland and Gomber. I just don't think the Rockies ever embracing rebuild mentality a lot or really ever outside of maybe this year is, is what hampers them here. I don't think that this team can, can immediately turn things around on a dime like this, but that's all subject to change with next year. We have, I mean, the, the thing when it's we're, when we're looking at right now is that the World Series, the playoffs, competing in the division, and road wins in general all seem so far away. I want to read a tweet here from Cespedes Family Barbecue. The Rangers are now 8 0 on the road this postseason. The Rockies won eight road games after the All Star break this year. I mean, it's a stray, sure, but like, these are the realities. Like, these are the things that you face as the Rockies. So it all trickles back into the fact that I the, the confidence in the organization is at an all-time low. This team has not navigated good free agent contracts of position players to bring in. This team is overcommitted and overspent on players. This team doesn't have the farm system and the developing abilities of other teams in the league and in the division. I, I want to be confident. I want to be hopeful. I don't want to just be constant negativity, but I'm not going to allow myself to be blinded by the fact of these two teams having an incredible run. Because just like we, we we talked all the whole first thing of these teams deserve to be there, these teams did this, they said blah, 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 blah. But there's a lot of things that got to bounce your way. But you have to set yourself up to 
to for those things. And you have to set yourself up to take advantage of those opportunities. And I don't think the Rockies have done themselves any favors. And if the Rockies go through this offseason and they trot out the same coaching staff, they trot out the same front office staff, they trout out the same team, basically, that, that, that we had to finish off the year last year, including bringing back the same pitchers, which I don't think they'll bring back everybody, but it's certainly likely. What are do we expect? Do we really think things will quickly turn around? We don't have exciting young pitchers that are, are, are in double or triple A right now. Couple, but a lot of late season promotions, as we heard. The Rockies still seem way too far off to even sit here and, and, and say that a, a two year turnaround is enough for this team. There will have to be a lot of big strides for this team to take. And that includes uh, uh, that. And that's it from every level for me to feel that they, that they have a shot, that they have an opportunity, that they are, going to be able to turn things around. And I and we'll see through the offseason. They they can start setting the table. But there's a lot of issues the Rockies got to figure out. There's a lot of things that are that are, that are problems for the Rockies that aren't easily fixed. And that goes down to the organization. That goes down to the philosophies. It's everything we've been talking about. So can this team turn things around? Sure. I mean, the Rangers and the Diamondbacks both did it in two different ways. But they're both ways that I don't think the Rockies succeed in either. Can the Rockies spend more money? Sure, certainly. Every team can spend more money. They're owned by the, some of the wealthiest people. And the Rockies are a top 10 attendance team. The Rockies are a team that certainly, uh, and they're in Denver. <laughs> I know Dick's ma making money there. But do you really have faith in Dick Momfort and his front office to quickly turn this around after 30 years of, of the contrary? And Arizona and, and Texas fit into that category too. Streaky and, and, and performances where they haven't been. Texas a little bit more consistent, I guess, in the mid-2000s and such. But both of these teams don't have long, long, consistent, deep postseason run histories. Arizona seems to uh, get them in there and just uh, – and, and then they'll, uh, they'll make some noise and do some damage. That's, that's, that's kind of what they do. But I think at some point, both of these teams had to take deep looks, the Diamondbacks and the Rangers, the owners, the front office, and everybody took deep looks at themselves, what's working, what's not working, and the positions and where they want to be. And they made changes. Dick Momfort and his aggressive loyalty doesn't set the stage and set the table for that. The exciting young position players are great. But the pitfalls, the issues are greater and go deeper. And I think those ultimately will get in the way of the team. Because, we, I mean, we didn't even hear from Bill Schmidt to end the season. No immediate availability. What is that? I wanted to hear from Bill Schmidt. I wanted to hear more. I mean, I, I want to know what the Rockies offseason plan is. But instead, we we basically can just chalk it up to, it's probably going to be pretty similar. I don't think this team and the way it's run has the ability to, to, to turn things around quickly like this. I think they're hoping that they get lucky. But we'll see. We'll see. One thing's for certain, though, if the Rockies do want to change, there's so many examples they can look at and so many teams that they can look at 
that I think will improve them, especially in this postseason, even when you factor in all of the issues and the shortcomings of these teams. And I think that's another opportunity to learn as well. Let's talk about that to close out the show here in segment number three. Before we do that, though, I want to talk to you about our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel's got you covered here for the World Series and all your football action. October baseball. Here it is. Right at the championship. The big moment. Don't miss out with America's number one sports book. Join FanDuel today and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to create your new account. Then you can get in on the action from the first pitch until the final out. Bet on everything from strikeouts to home runs to who will win the game. And if you don't want to wait the whole game to get a W, predict what will happen in the next at bat with quick bets. So head on over to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. Step up to the plate this postseason with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network and the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel, where your subscription is the best way to help the show grow. Uh, So we've been talking a lot about uh, where the Rockies compare to these teams, and, and I know I didn't dive too much into stats. If you're curious, the Rockies rank near the bottom in almost every statistical category this year, especially pitching. And uh, offense was pretty close to the same as well. That's what I mean. I mean, I mean, this is a team that that is so desperate for change, so desperate for a shakeup, so desperate for a change in, in philosophy, even with these guys that you have. Because with the exciting young core of guys, are the Rockies going to get the most out of them? You're going to trade them away like Jeff Hoffman and Miguel Castro. They'll contribute for other teams. There are so many examples of different ways to be successful, especially through the regular season and especially through the different variances that other teams face that the Rockies can learn from. And it's not just the Diamondbacks and the Rangers, but embrace rebuilds like the Orioles did and set yourself up for a position to be great. I mean, the Orioles, could you could look at that and say, yeah, they they they, they underperformed in the playoffs, but that's a young team with, with tons of upside and tons of long-term potential if the owner doesn't get in the way. Be like the Rays and be creative and keep giving yourself fighting chances while 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 getting the most out of random players and, and embracing changing things up a little bit, especially when it comes to vets. That might be a little tougher of a pill to swallow if you're the Rockies fans and some, some players you grow accustomed to and like. But again, we know this team underutilizes analytics. Spend more money. Spend more money. I mean, this is a Diamondbacks to spend less money than the Rockies and they're and they're making it. But you can spend more money if you're going to bring pitchers to Coors Field, pay them money, pay them money to come here. So you don't have to trade away. If you want to really bolster and boost, you're going to have to bring in good pitching with your money while also being able to hang on and get good production from younger uh, prospects and positional players. So you don't have to spend so much on a Chris Bryant or other veteran position players that. More often than not, the Rockies have struck out on in terms of long-term deals. I mean, not, not all of them, but but a good handful of them, uh, and, and especially with long-term commitments. Look, I mean, there's just – look at the successful teams. Compare yourself to them and make adjustments. It, it, it just feels like the Rockies are just so blinders up all the time. Not wanting to learn, not wanting to listen, not wanting to to embrace new ideas, trying to hold on to some long-standing tradition of thirty years that's a, an infant in the world of baseball and, and a tradition of losing. I really think the Rockies are. are th- this has to be a moment of of growth, and I, I just I just don't have a lot of confidence in the team making that growth, developing getting the most out of their players, getting the most out of the situations they find themselves in, getting the most out of everything. But we'll see. If they make steps forward in 2024, if they feel, and, and, and are able to make some deals and bring some people in, which might include some tough trades, then we'll, we'll, we'll evaluate there. But I just don't think the Rockies possess the same instincts 
that these other teams do or have developed to get to where they want to be. We'll see if that changes. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for joining us here and for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can subscribe. Be part of the show by letting me know your thoughts in the Locked on Rockies YouTube comment section. And you can find us on Twitter at LO Rockies as well. For your second listen of the day, Locked On MLB's got you covered. You also can get more Colorado sports coverage with the Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, Locked On Buffs podcasts. Folks, until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.